it's a crime not to do a green building today, you know. I found that through the years, so many years now, that the green building is, is, is not a style. It's actually the right thing to do. Start from the beginning, look at the site, try to save every mature tree that you can, preserve the biodiversity if you can, orientate the house in the right direction, preferably all the windows and doors, north and south, less openings in the east and west. I think in the 1990s, the roaring 90s as we call it, it was just developed, developed, developed and uh, didn't care where the materials came from, didn't care what the carbon footprint was, didn't care how much it cost to run a building. So nowadays, we, we start the other way around. We start from making sure it's green, making sure it's totally energy efficient. In 2005, I was the president of the Institute of Architects. Um, after I finished my term, there was the subprime crash around the world. And everyone started to, the market started to ask for green buildings. Green building is not just about energy, it's about living environment, it's biodiversity, it's uh, about conserving water, conserving resources, recycling, a lot of different aspects. So I got involved through the Institute of Architects. We set up Green Building Index, GBI, for Malaysia. I led the team that did it. And so it come, you know, at that time, I, I bought back this piece of land to build my house. And I wanted to test whether the tool actually worked. So I went for GBI Platinum, which is the highest rating for a residential house. We achieved GBI Platinum. So I, I tested every criteria that was in the tool to help somebody build a green building. So it, it literally has all the bells and whistles, but at very low cost. You know, when we started introducing GBI, one of the people who supported us the most were shopping malls. They were, the electric bill was so high, some even up to one over a million a month. The collection of rental, it just didn't work, you know. I think Malaysia in the region is, is definitely the market leader in green building. Yeah. And the Green Building Index tool is the world's fastest growing tool. That means the adoption rate was the fastest in the world of all the green tools for the tropics. Huh? There's this misconception that going green and sustainable is very expensive or more expensive, but it's, it's actually totally not true. I've got solar panels, so I was under the Surya solar panel scheme and solar panel prices have dropped tremendously in the past 10 years. Then the next one that we went for, of course, was rainwater harvesting. It's, it's a no-brainer because it rains a lot in, in the tropics. So I got that done and so rainwater harvesting was out of the way at very low cost. So now the target, the aim was to achieve net zero. Recycling material from the old house is also another no-brainer. It didn't cost me anything. And like the bricks, you know, they are used. I, I, the old bricks were really good. Even when you knock down the wall, they were still almost intact. For house owners, you, you have to go down the list, go for the no-brainers, low-hanging fruit, and then work yourself up and see whether you can afford it. Since Green Building Index has been set up, most architects today sort of work on that basis. They, they have become almost adopting that, that second nature of dealing with climate change. A building lasts for a very long time. There are buildings that are hundreds of years old. So if you build it wrong from day one, it, it will just, instead of becoming something you love and an asset, it will just become a huge liability. I think that's where banks and uh, bankers, financiers, uh, even local authority people who approve such buildings, they have a very long-term impact in all the decision-making. So you should get it right from day one.